I was recently interviewed by YouTuber Kareem Jovian, and Kareem asked me a great question. He asked, is neuroplasticity real? This is such an important question for people who suffer anxiety, so I thought I would make a whole video on this fascinating subject. So what is neuroplasticity, and how does it relate to anxiety? When we talk about neuroplasticity, we are talking about the brain's ability to physically change in response to some stimuli. Another way of putting it is the ability for the brain to be rewired. If you have suffered anxiety for a long time, you may think there is something fundamentally wrong with your brain, and feel like there is little you can do about it. But neuroplasticity says that you can do something about it. You can rewire your anxious brain so that you are not in a constant state of anxiety, and I'm going to show you evidence that therapies like CBT can physically change your brain for the better. So I did a search on neuroplasticity and found this systematic review. This review looked at 19 studies where MRI images were taken of people's brains who had an anxiety disorder. The images of 509 people were taken before and after a course of cognitive behavioural therapy, and the results were both fascinating and exciting. Now this does get complicated, so I will explain some terms I'm going to use. Hyperactivation means unusually high levels of activity, whereas hypoactivation means unusually low levels of activity. The first interesting thing the MRI showed was that in people with anxiety disorders, hyperactivation can be seen in the fear network of the brain, and hypoactivation is seen in the prefrontal cortex. One role of the prefrontal cortex is to regulate emotions like fear. Remember this term prefrontal cortex because we will talk later about this very important part of the brain. So by looking at the brain of someone with an anxiety disorder, you can physically see this oversensitivity to danger and inability to regulate the fear response. What was also fascinating is that exactly where in the brain the hyperactivity or hypoactivity can be seen varies between anxiety disorders. This shows that people's brains work differently depending on which anxiety disorder they have and work differently to people who do not have anxiety disorders. But all I have shown you so far is that if you have an anxiety disorder, your brain is certainly different. But here is the good news. The review showed that a number of studies found that a course of CBT can change the functioning of the brain. For example, when people with generalized anxiety disorder were treated with CBT, the MRI scans showed increased activation in the prefrontal cortex. Now, if you recall, the prefrontal cortex is involved in emotion regulation, so it's thought that the prefrontal cortex talks with the fear network, that is the amygdala, hippocampus and insula. So to put this in simpler terms, CBT helps the logical part of the brain to get better at telling the emotional part of the brain to calm the hell down. In panic disorder, CBT also showed increased activation between the prefrontal cortex and regions of the fear network, such as the amygdala and the hippocampus. And in OCD, reduced responses were seen in parts of the fear network, including the amygdala, striatum and ACC. And there were also signs of a strengthening of networks in the prefrontal cortex. In summary, the review said, we conclude that although each of the anxiety and related disorders is mediated by somewhat different neural circuitry, CBT may act in a similar way to increase prefrontal control of subcortical structures. Or in layman's terms, CBT helped the logical part of the brain to calm down the parts of the brain that create the fear response. As well as the changes in activity that can be seen by MRI imaging, it is also possible to measure the volumes of areas of the brain. And in this study of people with PTSD, it found that they had reduced volume in the hippocampus. The hippocampus is responsible for contextual fear responses. That means it works out whether a fear response is appropriate to the situation. People with PTSD can experience massive fear responses in situations that are not threatening, suggesting a problem in the working of the hippocampus. With CBT, not only do these inappropriate fear responses become less frequent and less intense, but the hippocampus increases in volume, suggesting that this area responsible for contextual learning is getting stronger. So there is no doubt that neuroplasticity is real, and CBT can rewire an anxious brain. I hope this gives you some hope, and if you can't afford or access a CBT therapist, you will find lots of videos that teach CBT on my channel. Check out my playlist for your anxiety disorder. Take care now.